I just sawed through one of the brake lines and this battery is completely dead. I'm wearing rubber gloves just in case. We're moving! Huh? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Louis Cole and I'm converting my 50 year old van to fully electric by repurposing Tesla parts. And I'm doing this with zero experience. As long as I can remember, I've been obsessed with fun vehicles and road trips. I bought my very first van on my 21st birthday, put a hammock in the back and traveled around Europe with my friends. I've had a double-decker bus that I lived in for three years, a school bus, and then a second double-decker bus. But in 2015, I finally purchased my dream van. This has actually been my dream for like years own a VW camper. I explored Montana before driving it all the way up the west coast and into Canada with some of my best friends and it was truly one of the best summers of my life. Unfortunately there were endless engine problems that followed and the van ended up off the road and unused. I even spent $5,000 for a complete engine overhaul only for it to immediately break down again. So the van won't start. Louis just spent so much money getting this fixed and it's broken again. The truth of it is, these beautiful vintage vehicles are extremely unreliable and extremely expensive to maintain. After spending six years traveling the world non-stop, I've recognized that I have to do it more sustainably. This has to start with finding inventive ways to get off fossil fuels and lessen my carbon footprint. Electric vehicles are the future. Yeah, baby. While I've always loved vehicles with real character, I also love doing things that are unique and seemingly impossible. I stumbled across someone who had converted their vintage VW, but was selling it for $130,000. I was determined to see whether there was a cheaper way to do it. After asking around and messaging a few people, I found Jehu Garcia, DM'd him on Twitter, and we arranged to meet. We have met up with Jehu, who is the expert in converting camper vans to electric. And today we are going to, I guess, just learn a little bit about what it takes to convert a van to electric. Wow. So that's the, that's the motor right there. It's like the size of a watermelon. It's less than 100 pounds and it's uh, got about 100 horsepower, right? Where, where are the batteries? It's about... 48 kilowatt hours, something like that. Um, I mean, some of these things you're saying, I don't quite know what that means, but I mean, I guess we'll learn. This is awesome. There is sounds, but... That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it started. Yeah. This is completely silent. So we're heading to EV West. This is the premier shop for electric conversions on classic cars. Mm. So I'm learning all of this as we're experiencing it. But basically, we use a lot of energy coming down. It's gonna be like three hours charging to get the batteries back up to the level they were to get back again. This is all really interesting because when we do start doing road trips and long distance things in my bus, I need to learn about all of this. Hi, Eddie. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, man. Michael Bream is a man who embraces both the past and the future. He loves classic cars, but only to a point, so he retrofits them to connect to the 21st century. I got into this uh, from racing cars, and then I wanted something a little bit more challenging, and we yeah. built the E36 Pikes Peak car, ran it at Pikes Peak, we made press, and then we started getting queries for work, and then, you know, a the company is history. born. Yeah, yeah, the rest is history. This thing, oh, I only just saw it, the DeLorean. Oh, oh this is... This is amazing. This is Tony Hawk's car. This is Tony Hawk's car. It's fiberglass. This one's amazing. And uh, with surface mount microfuses. It's actually easier because we're just doing micro traces. 
I, I have yeah, no idea what they're talking about at all. No but, idea. This is so much more complicated than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> what an amazing world. What an amazing world. What are some of your favorite vehicles you got in at the moment? Um, well, uh, all the Volkswagen products, but by far and above the Tesla powered 912 that's over there right now. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go for a little spin in this electric Porsche. <laughs> I don't think I've ever experienced that kind of acceleration. That's nuts. Yeah, right? It's uh, oh. probably the quickest accelerating car ever. Okay, we're back in Venice. We had an amazing day yesterday with Michael down at EV West. Jay, who is a legend. Both of them are legends and they're gonna help us make this dream happen. So I bought a tow bar and we're gonna get the van down to EV West. This like somehow clamps up here. A little bit more, a little bit more. Nine, one inch. Getting the bus down there is in itself like a si signaling that we are gonna do this. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's down there now, we can't turn back. I'm gonna keep the speed momentum going, so grab it. Oh. Okay. Because they don't actually know we're dropping it off, I'm just gonna write on the windscreen. Louis, it's lucky this we didn't wash this down. <laughs> First time I've ever heard that. Okay, it's been a few months since we first came down here, brought my van down and started this process of planning out how we're gonna put an electric engine in my bus. It's 2020, we're ready to do this project now, but we have just found out today, we just arrived at EV West down in San Diego and we just found out today, the original plan to potentially put a Tesla engine in the bus is gonna cause a lot of unknown obstacles and it could end up taking months and months and months if not like the whole year so i think after having a brief conversation that the better move is to go with a known setup and system that jehu has done before and he can help us with i think we're going to have a similar setup that he's done in this bus and talking about this bus oh, we're going to take it for a little spin this is going to be my first time driving an electric camper van Let's do this. Oh yeah, I can. Did it go? So it's in. Yeah, do I need to put it in gear or? Uh, it's already in third gear, so okay. you just have to take off the thing. <laughs> That's the problem with riding around. Oh, yeah. I'm it, sorry. It hits like that. So you dro you dropped this, right? Yeah. So. I'm so confused with the gearing. So it's in third. In can third. I stay in third or do I need to go in third? It's just, all the time? You can stay in third all the time. It's just like if you're on a super steep hill, maybe the motor's not gonna have enough torque to get going. If you're fully loaded and a steep hill okay. to, to get going, right? So you might have to But go if I was in on the highway, I wouldn't need to go into fourth. You don't. I drove all the way here on, on, on third. Third, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the yeah. door open. Oh, open. What the heck? How did that happen? <laughs> you got to slam him. You... <laughs> this is quite an adventure. Right? This is quite an adventure. It was a little scary. Way more power than the original engines have. The big question for me is getting enough range to do some really good road tripping in it because actually having it to be practically useful like to drive around California is like a big important thing for me. You know, so I had to bolt this tow bar on just to get it down here. Jehu, Jehu's measuring up the underneath section to put the mount the battery. So he's just gonna see how many batteries we can fit in. Batteries equals miles. So yeah. we'll make a box, right? Yeah. yeah. And the box will be sticking out here, but we'll we make just, it. This with is an just angle. a pipe, is it? Yeah, we'll remove that one because this won't be we be useless. Yet. And basically, you put uh, two little modules back to back, right? Like one here, yeah. And then another one, and then another one there, and then you'll put the ones in the back will be cross. This side. Yeah. We're gonna try and get twelve of these underneath the whole chassis, like the body of the bus. But the the danger is. If something punches, like we go over a bump or something like pierces the batteries, they could all set fire. 
So he's saying we need to like build like a metal box to slip them into so they don't listen you know so it's not as dangerous i just think we squeeze as many miles out of it as we can i think as long as i mean how much is each battery pack roughly depends right like i said so i think we cost it up basically and then figure out how much he sells them really expensive but you, we can find them in fact there's a guy just on the way here i'm just going to show you this bus that they're kitting out because it's very similar to mine it's like the high top it's a bay window Basically, this is what mine's going to look like once we take the existing um, combustion engine out. And this is where the electric engine, engine slots in there. So we need to do all that work on mine. I don't think I'm going to get it looking as nice and neat as this, to be honest. But it's cool to kind of see where we're, where we're heading. And then the engine, the motor that I think we're going to go with is called a Hyper 9. And it's the high voltage version, which is going to be a bit stronger than... Uh, Jehu's and then we're gonna mount the batteries underneath so I think in this conversion they're like mounting them on the floor so it's gonna be a raised floor but I think we're gonna build aluminium battery casing boxes and bolt them underneath to maximize the battery batteries that we can put in there and hopefully get like a 200 mile range so we can go on proper road trips this is the motor that we're looking at getting it's the hyper 9 is this the high voltage one no, this is the this is the normal one, right? That's a, yeah, that's. A, so we're getting the more powerful version of this. <laughs> Ooh. All right. <laughs> yeah. This feels this feels nice. I can't wait to get it back on the road. We have finalized a list of all the things we need to buy. I'm gonna get an email sent over in the next couple of days and pay the bill. It's a big investment. I could probably buy a really nice car for that same amount of money, but it's the future, it's electric cars, it's gonna be cool. I mean, look at these, look how epic they look. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I'm biting the bullet, I'm doing it, and then hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll be able to start doing things. I'm gonna try and sell the engine out the back, the current engine, which is broken. And then, yeah, we'll get building. I can't wait. One of the biggest costs of doing this build is the batteries, which is the Tesla Model 3 batteries. Model S batteries. Model S batteries. Going through EV West was like their their price in the batteries was like pretty expensive. So Jay, who sent me a link to this guy on eBay, he's selling them for like a thousand dollars each, but he had 15 available. So I'm offering him to buy 14 for 10 grand, which I think is like 700 and something dollars each which he's agreed to, so we've just arrived. And if, if they all check out okay, like Jehu's gonna just test that they're all working fine. We've saved ourselves six thousand dollars in the bill. So did you pull these out of a, a Tesla wreck? Yep, Model S, P85D. So what we're looking for, this is to be 24 Yeah, 24.4, 20, yeah. They look great. I'm excited. This is the first thing we purchased, so it okay. makes me feel like we got some momentum. We're actually going. Done. Yeah? Yep. I love PayPal. <laughs> <laughs> Today is officially day one of actually starting any work on the van. I'm super excited. I just sawed through one of the brake lines and it's now dripping brake fluid. 